In this lecture, we're going to discuss different types of muscle contractions, and we'll take a look at performing a qualitative anatomical analysis. Muscles produce force, and you can think of the muscles as a force vector with a line of action, point of application, direction, and magnitude. Muscles produce tension through shortening. They can only shorten or pull. They cannot expand or push with any force. This is why we have muscles on either side of a joint. Across a joint, a group of muscles are responsible for flexion, and another group are responsible for extension. These muscle groups can work together to stabilize the joint, or the flexion group could resist the extension group and vice versa. If a muscle or group of muscles shortens to produce force, this is called a concentric contraction. If a muscle group contracts to resist movement but does not change length, it's said to be an isometric contraction. Isometric referring to same length. If a muscle group resists motion while lengthening, it's said to be an eccentric contraction. You can think of concentric contractions as active shortening of the muscles. Isometric contractions are actively staying the same length, and eccentric contractions are actively resisting lengthening. In activities such as walking, we have eccentric contractions that are slowing the movement and getting the limb ready for the next phase. For instance, at the end of swing phase, the hamstrings will contract to slow the leg and prepare it for weight acceptance. In weight-bearing activities, or when you're in a position where you need to resist gravity, most often you'll be performing an eccentric contraction to resist gravity unless you're actively trying to accelerate in the same direction as gravity. Now let's take a look at performing a qualitative anatomical analysis. This is a technique which is used to determine which muscles are necessary to produce movements, when they're active, and what type of contraction they're producing. After you've chosen an activity to evaluate, divide your activity into temporal or key phases. Identify the joints involved and the movements occurring at those joints. Determine the type of muscular contraction and identify the predominant active muscle group at each joint. Identify any instances where rapid joint angular accelerations occur and when impacts occur. Then you can identify any extremes in the range of motion. For instance, this could be when the joint reaches full extension or full flexion. Just be careful when defining something as hyperextension as your body can only really hyperextend at ball and socket joints. If you were to hyperextend, for instance, at your elbow, it would cause an injury. Once you've chosen the joint to focus on, you can identify what happens between each of your key frames, taking into consideration the joint motion, the muscle contraction type, the active muscle group, whether there's rapid acceleration or impacts occurring, and if there's an extreme range of motion. Let's take a look at our example of sprinting and use our qualitative anatomical analysis to break it up into phases and identify the movements that are happening. Looking at the sprinter's left hip, between the preparation and loading phase, we see flexion of the hip with the hamstrings and gluteus muscles contracting eccentrically as they resist gravity accelerating her body downward. In this phase, there's no rapid acceleration or impact and no extreme range of motion. From the loading phase to the triple extension phase, we see extension of the hip from concentric contraction of the hamstrings and gluteus muscles, and there's definitely rapid acceleration here as her hip is moving into full extension. From triple extension to early swing phase, her left hip is flexing from concentric contraction of the iliopsoas and rectus femoris muscles. This is going to involve a rapid acceleration, but there won't be any impacts or extreme ranges of motion. Near the end of the swing phase, she will move into the terminal swing phase. She's still moving in concentric flexion approaching the terminal swing phase, but near the end of the phase she'll be performing an eccentric contraction with her hamstrings and gluteus muscles in order to slow the flexion of the thigh and prepare for the next phase. We can observe rapid acceleration as she initiates the swing phase and rapid deceleration during the eccentric contraction of terminal swing. From the terminal swing phase to the braking phase, the hip is extending from concentric contraction of the hamstrings and gluteus muscles. There's rapid acceleration as she extends toward the ground and immediately decelerates on contact. There's no extreme range of motion in this phase, but there is an impact with the ground. From the braking to absorption phase, we'll again see extension of the hip resulting from concentric contractions of the hamstrings and gluteus muscles. There's no rapid accelerations, impacts, or extreme ranges of motion that occur in this phase.